In our last video, we talked about how to calculate volatility by using the expected return. But what if you don't know the expected return? Well, in that case, you could use historical realized returns in order to calculate volatility. So let's say that you have the S&P 500 or some other stock market index, and you want to know what is the volatility over a certain period of time. So let's take the S&P 500 from 2004 to 2007. You've got the annual return, so it's 10.9% in 2004, going through 2007, where it's 5.5%. Okay. Now, you want to calculate the volatility of the S&P 500. How would you go about doing that? Well, first off, we need to know the average return over this period. Okay, so what we're just going to do here is we're going to take each return, so 0.109 for 2004, 0.049 for 2005, etc. We're going to add them together in the numerator. Okay, so 0.109 plus 0.049 plus 0.158 plus 0.055, and we're going to divide that by four because there are four periods, four years here. Okay, now that gives us 0 0.09275. So in other words, the return was 9.275%. But we're going to use that number in order to compute our volatility. Because remember, our volatility is basically just going to be the standard deviation of these returns. But before we can get to standard deviation, we need to calculate the variance. And so we're going to need this number here, this 0 0.09275, that average return. We're going to need that to calculate the variance. So each, here's what we do to get the variance. We're going to take each year's return. So 2004, for example, that 0 0.109. We're going to take that and we're going to subtract the, the 0 0.09275. The average return, you can think of that as the mean. Okay. So we're going to take the observation for each year, each year's return, and then we're going to subtract out the mean, the average return, each time. And then we're going to square it, right? That's all we're doing with the variance. We're getting squared deviations from the mean, OK? So we do that here. And I'm not going to belabor the point and go through all this. You can see the equation here. But we're going to divide in the denominator not by 4, but actually 4 minus 1, right? So the formula would be n minus 1. n is the number of observations. We have four years here, so that n is 4. But we're subtracting 1. Why? Because we don't know the actual expected return. We don't know that. What we're doing really here is sampling. So yeah, I don't want to go into all the statistics and everything, but suffice it to say that we lose one degree of freedom here, and so we have to subtract 1 from the denominator. Okay, so now I'm just going to do the algebra. I'll let you do the algebra, but ultimately we end up with this fraction here, 0 0.007861, and then we divide that by three, of course, because that's four minus one, and that gives us 0 0.00262 as our variance, right? But the variance is not the volatility. The variance is what allows us to calculate the standard deviation. Right, because the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So we're going to take the square root of this 0 0.00262, and that's going to give us our standard deviation, which is 0 0.051186, and we can convert that to a percentage, 5.1186%. This is our volatility, which is the same thing as our standard deviation. So if somebody said, for the period, what, what are we looking at here? 2004 to 2007. This is right before the big crash in 2008, so things were still looking pretty good. So for this period in time, the volatility of the S&P 500 was 